In uncertain days, it is important to remember that our world is getting ready to meet God. We are all getting ready to meet Him. The King is coming. Today, we join Scott Pauley in walking through the final book of the Bible, the revelation of Jesus Christ. Someday, everything that you see around you, all of the buildings, all of the uh, beautiful natural things that we observe, all of these material, tangible things are going to disappear. In fact, this world is going to be gone. The world that you know is going to be gone because the Lord is creating a new heaven and a new earth for us. So have you ever considered what are the things that are here now that will continue then? In fact, there are only three things here on earth that will be in eternity, and all three things are revealed to us in Revelation chapter 5. You remember in Revelation 5, we've come into the throne room with John. We see the one sitting on the throne, our great God, and we see the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who won and is worthy, the one who prevailed and now holds the title deed to the universe in his right hand. We're about to talk more about what is set in motion out of this scene, out of this moment in heaven, in eternity. But before we pass on to that, I want you to see these three beautiful things that will outlive time. There are three things right now on earth that are going to continue. And I think if we can identify them, Maybe, just maybe, it will help us to order our priorities. What matters? Well, listen to verse number 8. The Bible says, And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. Listen to that. The prayers of saints. So the first thing that we see in eternity... Uh, after the rapture of the church, in the presence of the reigning Christ, uh, that continued from this world into the next, are our prayers. Now, I don't know about you, that, that encourages me greatly. Because sometimes I get the feeling that I'm praying, but maybe my prayers are just bouncing off the ceiling. They're, they're not getting anywhere. They're not going anywhere. A friend, I want you to know that every prayer that is ever uttered God hears the cry of that prayer. Now, does that mean that every prayer gets answered uh, the way we want it to? No. And uh, is it possible that we could be living in such a way that our prayers are not being answered? Yes. Uh, but here is a picture of saints, faithful saints of God, who are living, who are interceding, who are praying. And uh, where are those prayers? Friend, those prayers have come up before God. Do you realize that God keeps all your prayers? That your prayers live on even after you? That your prayers continue to have an impact into eternity? In fact, turn over a couple pages in Revelation. Come to Revelation chapter 8. Now listen to Revelation chapter 8, verse 3 and verse 4. And we'll come to this chapter soon. But the Bible says, And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. So the prayers that you and I offer here are not in vain. Keep on praying, my brother. Keep on praying, my sister, because your prayers are getting through and they are living on. Do you understand that someday you're going to meet your prayers in heaven? Someday at the throne of God, at the nail-pierced feet of Jesus Christ, you're going to meet answers to prayer because the prayers live on. And he uses here a, a picture of incense. Uh, in verse uh, 8 of chapter 5, it's vials full of odors. In chapter 8, it's incense rising up. The idea, uh, the Old Testament sacrifices always had incense offered with them. And you could see the smoke rising up and the smell of it rising up. Now, the picture is that our prayers are rising up from earth into eternity, from earth into heaven. Our prayers are coming into God's presence. That's what prayer does. It brings you into the throne room. And your prayers are going to outlive this life. 
The second thing that's found in this chapter that are going to make it into eternity are not only our prayers, but people. Listen to verse 9. And they sing a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and has made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth. So what do you see here? You see a great host of people. By the way, I love this. Did you see that God's not prejudiced? Every kindred, every tongue, every people, every nation. God wants all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. The Bible says he's not willing that any should perish. God loves all people. Jesus Christ died for every man. He wants you to be saved, friend. He wants those you know to be saved. He wants those that are perhaps lovely to you and those who may seem unlovely to you to be saved because he loves all people. You see, nothing is more equal than the gospel. It reminds us we are all sinners, all of us. It reminds us that we all need a Savior and everybody gets saved the same way. That's why people used to say the ground is level at the foot of the cross. Uh, the, the second thing that's going to live on into eternity are the souls of men, the eternal souls. Oh, if that's true, don't you think we ought to be giving more attention to getting the gospel out and getting people to Jesus Christ? That we ought to be seeking people of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and telling them the Lord wants to save you and He wants you to live with Him for all eternity. In verse 11, He says, And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beast and the elders. And then it says this, And the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. Now, my math's not the best, but I think, I think that 10,000 times 10,000 is a hundred million souls. And if that's not enough, he then adds on at the end of verse number 11, and thousands of thousands. So it's an untold number. We have no idea how many will be there. But we do know this. One precious soul on this earth someday will be the last one to be saved. Some soul will be the last one to come in to this great multitude. Oh, may God help every one of us to make sure we are saved, number one. And number two, to seek to get everybody else saved we possibly can. Are you going to heaven? Are you going? Wonderful. Then who are you taking with you? Into eternity, our prayers go. Into eternity, people go. And then into eternity, our praise goes. We read a moment ago in verse 9, they're singing this new song. It's the song of the redeemed. Listen to the rest of it in verse 20. Saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them, heard I saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. Praise will continue. This is eternity's song. Remember, God inhabits the praises of His people. Well, that's going to be true in eternity as well. What are you going to be doing one million years from today? I'll tell you, you're going to be praising God. Uh, could I say that maybe we ought to get a little practice today, that this life is just a warm-up for the eternal concert. You're going to be in the Lord's choir someday. Yes, prayers will continue, so we should continue praying. People will continue, so we should continue seeking their salvation. And praise will continue, so we should continue praising and worshiping Him now. Time affects eternity, and eternity should affect time. Would you ask the Lord to press these three truths on your heart today and let these three things that will be present in eternity be present in your life today? The purpose of all Scripture is to see God. In Revelation, the curtain is pulled back and we are reminded not to simply look at world events, but to look to Christ. We hope you will join us next time as Scott Pauley continues our study through this amazing book of the Bible. You may also join us right now for additional studies and a library of helpful resources at enjoyingthejourney.org. You will find several new features at our online home, and we trust they will be a blessing to you as you walk with God. Plan to visit us each day at enjoyingthejourney.org and we look forward to returning to Revelation on our next broadcast. 
keep your eyes on Christ and look up. The King is coming.